Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to demonstrate how you can use Python to make some very simple API requests. And our goal here today, what we're trying to accomplish is really dumb, or yeah, I guess dumb is the best word for it, but the ability to actually use APIs, interact with them and take advantage of them is a great skill to have because most vendors these days have available APIs and if you know how to interact with them, then you can do a lot of things programmatically that you might otherwise have had to do manually, just a bunch of tedious legwork. So you can kind of make your life easier and also make your work more consistent by defining these actions in like a Python script and then doing them through the API instead of maybe a web console. So it's a great skill and we're going to completely undermine that today by making a very stupid script. So what are we actually making? Well, it's going to be a script that reaches out to a repository of information, a very important repository of information, requests a bit of information, receives the response, grabs the, the data from that response that we're interested in, which is a string of text, and then it will package that information and send it along to another API. And that other API that's gonna receive that information is a service that allows you to send text messages. So long story short, what we're gonna do is get information and then text it to a number. So there's a few prerequisites here. The first thing you need is a provider that allows you to send text messages via their API. And what we're using today is called Twilio, but there's I'm sure there are plenty of other providers out there. So you might want to shop around, but you have to make an account and, and get all that set up, right? You have to be sort of validated with them, be probably uh, verified in some way, and get your API keys and authentication tokens and so forth. So with that set up on the back end, uh, you have a bit to do locally as well. You've gotta make sure you've got Python 3 installed, not Python 2.7, but Python 3, and that should come with most versions of Linux these days. I'm not sure about Mac OS, so you might want to double check that. And then on the Windows side of things, you're probably gonna to have to download the installer and, and go through the installation process if you haven't already. So with Python 3 installed, if you want to follow along with us exactly and use the provider that we're using, you have to install two additional modules for this Python script to use. And the modules are, if I go over to the demo machine here, the modules that we're using today are called requests and Twilio. So you can install those modules using this uh, pip3 command and you may have to actually install pip3 as well. So that might be a separate installation for you. But pip3 install is the general command you use to add some module to Python that doesn't come with it sort of by default. So with pip3 install, we will just type the name of the module and install requests, which is a general purpose API call module. You can do all the different HTTP methods like post and put and get and so forth. And it's really very useful and powerful for general purpose API scripting. So requests is step one, that's the first module. And then what we're using, the service that we're using to send text messages is called Twilio. And they actually offer, this company Twilio, offers a module called Twilio. And it's just a, a module that makes interacting with their API specifically a little simpler. So if you are go, opting for that company, you can install Twilio. If you used a different provider, then maybe they've got their own module. Or alternatively, you could just use requests actually. So you can make those API calls. Everything that we do here today, you can just do directly through requests. So with all that installed, let's take a look at how we are going to, or what we're gonna do. So the first thing that we're gonna do in this script is we're going to get a cat fact. And there is an API called the cat facts API that allows you to get some number of cat facts as a string of text. So our first goal here is to get a cat fact. And then we will, once we're, we've established that we're able to get a cat fact from the cat facts API, we'll then text it uh, actually to my boss and my boss's boss. So that's the goal here today. And we're not go we didn't get any sign off on this. They're not gonna know where this text is coming from. So we'll see how that plays out. But uh, I'm not gonna worry about that until, until I have to. 
So let's let's start actually writing the script. So I'm going to use nano. You can use whatever text ed editor you want. If you're not on a command line interface, Visual Studio Code is a great free uh, environment for writing Python and all kinds of other uh, scripts and languages. But I'm going to use nano, and let's name this cat facts for Dan's. Both both of uh, both my boss and my boss's boss are named Dan. So and then it's .py, right? Because it's a Python script. And here we are in Nano. First thing we want to do is just import requests. And I like to, maybe a little bit too much, I like to always go and run the script with every sort of minor change that I make. Just in case I break something, I don't want to have to go sort of figure out what broke down the line. I want to figure it out right away so I can fix it as I go. So I'm going to run this, Python 3 cat facts for Dan's, and it didn't output any sort of error message, which means that we did successfully import that module into the script. We didn't do anything with it, but we imported it. So with requests imported, now we can actually get a cat fact. So let's do that. I'm gonna actually make a variable called response. And we are going to fill response with the response from cat facts. So the way to do that is you use requests.get, which means we're, we're making a, in terms of HTTP methods, we're making a get request, right? So it could be a post, it could be put as well, but we're making a get request and we have to tell it what URL we want to actually send this request to. And the URL is, it's kind of got two parts. The first part is sort of the base URL for the, the site in general. So we want to paste that in. And then we also have to tell uh, through the, the path that we provide after that, that's gonna tell the API what we're kind of interested in. So if we go to the documentation for facts here, you can see it gives you a little bit of information about what requests look like, what your options are, what responses look like. And it's even got this example here. So in this example, we are requesting cat facts or just facts in general, a random fact. We're specifying that the animal type should be cat. Let me make that a bit bigger. And we can also specify the amount of cat facts that we want to get. So I'm just gonna copy this. Copy and pasting, it might feel like cheating, but honestly, I try to copy and paste from examples as much as possible, because otherwise it's just more chance to make typos and cause yourself headaches. So copy and paste and don't feel ashamed about it. And I basically here appended that, that path to the URL. So it's now catfact.herokuapp.com slash fact slash random uh, slash or with the animal type is equal to cat. And I just set the amount equal to one. So I just want to get one cat fact per API call. So what this does now, requests will go, it will send the get request, it will receive the response, and it's gonna save it in this variable called response. And we can even test that out now if we wanted to. So what I'm gonna do is print response. And actually if I just print response by itself, it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. But what I could do is tell it not just to to print the, the base response object, which is kind of like a, a container, for lack of a better uh, term. I'm not like a developer, so I don't know all the terminology. But if you actually add the .json, it will parse the response, parse the JSON in the, the response and actually provide something that is somewhat useful. So let me just quickly save this and let's run it and you'll kind of see what I mean. So this is the response from CatFax. And there's a lot of information here, but the, the information that we really want to extract from this is the text field, which let's see what it says. Uh, Thanks to an extremely efficient pair of kidneys, cats can hydrate themselves by drinking salt water. Well, I'm sure that that's gonna be important for my bosses to know. So we will uh, extract that now. We don't want all this extra stuff in our text message. So how do we extract it? Well, it's actually really easy with, uh, with Python anyway, and with the request module. So what we could say is that we're interested in that one field called text. Let's just make sure this is working as usual. 
I'm gonna run it again. And notice that now we're just getting the text portion. So you can specify exactly what you want. And a cat's whiskers are thought to be some sort of radar. Yeah, it's for, yeah, for judging space, I guess. So anyway, back to the script. Let's, uh, let's save the, whatever response we get, let's save it to a variable called cat fact. And make sure that our syntax is right. So what we've got so far is we make the request, we save the overall response to a variable called response, and then we extract the text of that response, the actual cat fact, to the variable called cat fact. So now we've got that done. We've successfully got the data that we want to inform my bosses about. Next thing we have to do is, is actually inform them. And luckily, with Twilio, they give you a really great example. And again, I like to copy and paste, so that's what I'm gonna do. So this example is, a, is a, a template that you can use for sending text messages with Twilio. So I'm just gonna copy this. And then if we go back, I'm actually going to, to paste it in. So let me paste. And I'm gonna clean this up a bit. So actually the first thing I wanna do is I want to keep the imports all at the top. So I'm just going to basically retype out that bit. I'm gonna get rid of that line. And we can get rid of the comments and the space here. And let's kind of add a little bit of space. So what all have we accomplished here? Well, we've actually imported Twilio, so now we can use it in this script. That's what happened right about there. And we've also got these new variables, account, SID, and auth token. So again, this is gonna vary depending on which provider you use, but for Twilio, these are the two bits of information that you need to actually send an API call or make an API call and have them not kick it back to you and say no. So you need to provide that information. And for Twilio, you get it right when you sign in on your, your dashboard, your console, that information is provided for you. So that's something that I'm going to copy and paste in off screen because of course I don't want anyone commandeering my account and sending all kinds of who knows what to people. So I'm not going to expose that publicly, but you would just paste in your, your keys here. And what else did we do? We've got the client. This is the, the construct that we're going to use to actually send a, well, to make an API call that will then cause a text message to be sent. So that's what the client is here. And what I wanna do is actually put this in a function because I've got two bosses that I want to provide cat facts to. And with Twilio, last time I checked, you have to make a separate API call for every text message that you send. So it's easier if we kind of wrap this all up in a function and then sort of run the function multiple times. So I'm gonna call it cat facts for Dan. Or actually, no, let's, let's make it a little bit better than that, send cat facts. Yeah, so the function's called send cat facts and I'm just going to wrap up everything else here within that. Okay. And bear with me. I try to keep scripts as organized as possible while I go uh, because I'm not a developer and I get confused very easily. So let's see, we make our client and then we have to define the message that we wanna send. So the first thing that we define here is a phone number that we want to actually send the message to. And in our case, we've got two. So how are we actually going to accomplish that? Well, that, this is one of the reasons that, or this is the primary reason that we're actually using a function. Because what I want to do is, is provide a variable. I'm gonna call it boss phone, I guess. All right, so that's gonna be the number that we use. And if I put that in the parentheses up here, what's, what it's gonna do, if I could type, What's gonna do is when we call the function, we, we provide the phone number and then it will sort of be filled in down here, right? So, okay, that's how we are going to provide the 
the phone number of the bosses, the head honchos. And then uh, the other thing I want to do is provide the source phone number, which is something that I had to go and actually manually kind of provision. So let me paste that in really quickly. So this is just a phone number. It's like a dollar to get a specific phone number from Twilio, but again, it all depends on your, your particular service provider. But this is the phone number that we're going to send this important information from. And I'm just defining it here instead of like outside the function because it's not going to change. And then the last thing is the actual body of the, the text message. So what are we actually going to text them? And here again, I'm going to I'm going to use a variable called cat info. So cat info. And this should be everything we need. So what we'll do if we want to send a text message to somebody, we could call the function now. It, it won't run by default, but you have to call it. And we could say, you know, here's a phone number. I guess it has to be formatted a particular way. One, two, three, four, five, six, you know, something like that. So you provided a phone number to send the text message to and then a message. Hello. Right, and then that would actually send that particular phone number, the text message, hello. So we're almost there, we're almost there. But the next thing we have to do is write this in such a way that we 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 can run the script once and send both uh, the recipients the cat fact. So I'm going to define one more variable. And I think this is the last one we have to define. And that's just gonna be boss phone numbers. And this is another one that I'm gonna to have to fill in off screen because I mean, for obvious reasons, I don't want to, I get in trouble, more trouble than I'm going to get in. Uh, I would get, I would absolutely not be very popular if I exposed those. But I'm, basically what you would do is if you've got multiple variables that you want to loop through, you know, you define it in square brackets and then comma separate each item in that list. So your phone numbers would go here. And then what you can do with those phone numbers defined is then loop through them like so. So we could say for boss phone number in, I guess, boss phone numbers, right? We want to, oops, I'm using the, I'm using the wrong syntax here. We want to uh, send a cat fact, right? So we'd say send cat facts. And then we would actually provide the, the phone number, one of the phone numbers in that list, whichever one we're on. I'm having trouble with uh, keyboarding right now. All right, we'd send it to that particular phone number and then we'd send the actual fact. All right, so we're gonna loop through it. For each phone number in that list of phone numbers, we're going to run the send cat facts function with that phone number. So one thing that we could do to simplify this script is actually put, we could move, let me see if I can control K, I think it's control U, yeah. Sorry, I'm just making sure that I like copy and paste this properly. So one thing we could do to make this script a little bit cleaner is we could use a different function and we could call it get cat fact. And if we put that in a function, then we can then you know reuse it down here. So we could say cat fact, or we could call it like this cat fact, this particular cat fact is equal to, what was it, get cat facts? Get cat fact. So the idea here is we run this, this whole response where we run this whole request and the response, we're going to parse it, but instead of um, instead of saving that into a variable, we're gonna say return the parsed text, just that, that particular cat fact. And then it will essentially, from this function, 
it will return that cat fact, right? And it's gonna save it into this cat fact. And then we can pass that into, into uh, send cat facts. So we could say this cat fact. Alternatively, you could just put the, the function right here and not use a variable, but just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna leave it like this. So let's see, did we do everything properly? Who knows? Uh, what I'm gonna do before we go and paste in the, the numbers is I'm going to comment out send cat facts and I want to at least make sure that all this is working. And I like to print out, let's do print this cat fact. So we will use the get cat fact function, save it to this cat fact, and then print out the contents of that variable. And because we've got, let me just quickly fill in some, some kind of filler text, because we've got two numbers, you know, we're gonna loop through the boss phone numbers even though we're not using them. So because we've got two, two numbers defined, we should get two cat facts. But we'll see, you know, that's what I'm expecting. Let's actually see if it plays out like that in reality. And it does. So here's cat fact number one, not every cat gets high from catnip. And then cat fact number two, evidence of jaguars from two million years ago. Cool. So, all right, back into nano. What I'm gonna do now is uncomment the send cat facts bit. And then I need to actually fill in this information up here with the account SID, the auth token, and my boss's phone numbers. So let me bring that up here. And make sure that we have the right formatting and I'm gonna copy and paste those in. Okay. Hmm. One second, bear with me. I'm having copy and paste related issues here. All right. All right, I've got the phone numbers in. Still have to actually copy and paste my, those account identifiers in. And my account identifiers are here. And finally, the authorization token or authentication token, one of the, one of the two. So basically what I did in, in all those, uh, those variables that were just two double quotes with no actual content, I just pasted in the appropriate information. So now what we should do or what should occur here is that we will loop through my boss's phone numbers and send them each a cat fact. So let's see if uh, let's see if that actually succeeds. So we're gonna do let's see Python three cat facts for Dan's. All right, so it printed out the cat facts, but let me just pull it back up here. Let me just double check that everything's good. Yeah, we forgot to take out the print out uh, function, the uh, the call to print to print out the cat facts, but we also sent the boss my bosses some cat facts. And specifically, one of my bosses knows about stroking a cat to help relieve stress. And the other one is talking about cats responding better to women than men. So we've informed my boss and my boss's boss a little bit about cats today. But I don't really want to necessarily leave it there. I want to, you know, maybe 10 a.m. every day, let's, let's send them a cat fact. So you can actually on Linux devices, you can use cron jobs to run the script programmatically. On Windows devices, you might have to use like task scheduler. So the process might be a bit different, but let's quickly make a cron job that will run this script once a day at 10 a.m. So it's gonna be, if you're using a Unix environment, Mac OS or Linux, cron tab dash E will bring you into the editor for your cron job. And it's kind of a weird syntax, but the just to go through it really quickly, you can, um, and I, I even have to check my notes, you can specify the minutes and then the hour of the day that you want this, this periodic action to occur. 
And then we have the day of the month, the, the month itself, and the day of the week. So if you just use asterisks here, it means like every day of the month, every day of the week. So we're just going to use asterisks because we really want to send at 10 a.m. every day, we want to send a cat fact. So that looks good to me. And the last thing we have to do is tell cron what we actually want to run. So I'm going to say user bin python3. I think that's the path to python3. And then I also want to tell it the, well, I, I need to copy and paste this, don't I? So let me see if that works. OK. And why do I need to copy and paste it? Because I don't remember the actual name of the script. So it's cat facts for dance.py. OK, so that's the first thing I need to know. The other one is just Python 3 user bin. OK. So it's always good to, before you go into the text editor, to know what you're doing. But all right, so it's uh, user bin Python 3. We're going to call Python 3. And with Python 3, we are going to run slash root slash, did I already forget it? Uh, cat facts for Dan's dot pi. I think that's it, right? Cat facts for Dan's. I'm gonna have to double check that, but this should now run every day at 10 a.m. So let's see if it takes the syntax and everything. Yeah, if we do a cron tab. All right, that's not it. Cron tab. Let's see, what's the, the command here? list dash l yeah we've now got this script running every day at 10 a.m to send some cat facts along to my bosses so just to summarize uh what we did let me let me quickly let me quickly uh sanitize this script i copy and pasted it up here to to notepad so that i could do this at the end but I just have to get rid of all any sort of identifying information before I show it. <laughs> all right, this all looks good. Okay, so just to summarize what we did and how this works, you know, we had to import our modules. You can see we've got our variables kind of in a different place here. Uh, we we defined our variables like the boss's phone numbers, the account identifier the uh, the auth token and so forth, defined all those variables. And then we had two separate functions. So in this particular iteration of the script, uh, we had send text. I think it was send cat facts when we did it. But when I first templated this out, it was send, it was like send text, right? So we have a uh, send cat fact, which we passed the message as well as the phone number. And then we also had the new fact, or it was like get cat fact when we did it, which actually just made the request to get a cat fact. So the function names were slightly different and I didn't even think about that. But uh, in this template, it's really accomplishing the same thing. It's just kind of laid out in a slightly, slightly different way. So using these, um, these functions, really makes the code a lot easier to, to wrangle because you can reuse code. And hopefully, you know, hopefully this is something that you find interesting or you think you might get some actual use out of as opposed to just bothering your bosses. Uh, but yeah, this is a, a simple and kind of dumb example of using APIs, but you could easily use this for much more important things. For instance, another thing that I might demonstrate if there's any interest is the is using this SMS functionality, the ability to send text messages, not to bother my bosses with unwanted cat facts, but to send a, an authentication code, a two-factor authentication code, just like when you log into certain accounts and you get the six-digit pin. You could do that pretty easily or something, maybe not, you'd want to have it validated, the security of it, but you can actually accomplish it at a, at a basic level pretty easily through Python. So maybe that would be a slightly more real world or relevant example. Uh, and maybe I'll do that, but you can imagine there's just so many possibilities with uh, all the APIs in the world. And then with as easy as Python makes it to interact with them, I mean, the, the sky's the limit. So hopefully you found that kind of, uh, kind of interesting and we'll see if I ever hear back from, from my bosses about this. Eventually they'll find out if this ends up on YouTube, but uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. <laughs> so thanks for joining me. Hopefully that was, 
you know, worth your time and you learn something. And I will see you in the next video.